and gentlemen, my name is Mike Larkin, one half of the SM Show podcast, and I'm back today with another interview. I am on the line with the very talented artist, Miss Danielle Morgan, out of the UK. Danielle, how are you doing today? I'm good, Michael. I'm happy to have you. Thank you so much for your time. You've done a lot. you got a lot going on with your music. We're going to talk about Love in the Harbor, and we're just going to have some fun and talk about uh, music today. Brilliant. All right. Uh, first and foremost, let's talk about uh, your influences. Who were some of your favorite artists growing up, and who was like the one that really inspired you to get into the music business? Um, growing up, I listened to a lot of Motown, um, and my family are Irish. My mother's side are Irish, so a lot of folk music, um, country music, and really just yeah, just sort of good old fashioned musical theatre, really. So all of that put into into a mix. Now, that I can relate to because I actually grew up some Motown myself. You think of artists like The Temptations and what they've done for the music industry. And obviously, you cannot be amiss if you don't mention The Beatles and what they've done. But yeah, the Motown sound, you know what it is? I've always been one of the guys. I don't know how you feel, but I'm a very eclectic mix. Like, I can pretty much listen to everything. I don't know how you feel about that. But yeah, eclectic is always, like, I would think the way to go because music is just music. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, it depends what mood I'm in. Like, today, I was listening to Enya. Nice. Um, it it just it just depends, you know. I, I like Pink. I like a lot of of what she does, um, and I know that on one of her albums she did some country stuff just with an acoustic guitar with her dad, because um, her dad was a, a big influence. So yeah, it just depends what mood I'm in. But across the board, um, I'm quite open to lot lots of types. And what's great about you is you have, like I said, you're amazing talent. You got an amazing voice. I listened to uh, a couple of years ago. You had your Abbey Road session coming on. Talk about doing that album. There's a lot of great songs off that album, like you know, No Trace of You, Behind Closed Doors, Take Them Away, Love Me, Hold Me. Just talk about the whole recording process behind the whole Abbey Road session. Um, the, the the Abbey Road session was was sort of one of those moments in time that you think's never going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and John Merrigan, who writes with me and does everything really in, in reference to the band um he he basically said one day you know what what would it take to get you into a recording studio to get these songs that is a very personal journey live and i just said oh you know abbey road then and literally somehow something happened and a few weeks later um he sat me down and he said um you're going to be recording in abbey road so that in itself was uh, are you sure? Um, and then going to Abbey Road, we went a few days before just for a recce. Um, and I honestly believed that we'd be recording in the shop next door or something. But actually, no, it, it was Abbey Road as, as you sort of see it. Um, it, it was a magical... Um, I'm, I, it's two years on, but it still takes time to absorb a moment like that. Um, no Trace of You was written as a ballad initially um, and we were very lucky to work with um, the real John Smith who's an LA producer and did 16 years in Nashville um, so when we did No Trace of You he asked the vibe what we wanted and we said between myself and John we was feeling the killers we was feeling you too we were feeling pink so he came up with that whole uh sort of vibe that you hear in No Trace of You. And when we were recording the vocal on that, I did probably two hours in the vocal booth and came out and I thought it was okay. And John Merrigan said, uh, no, I'm not feeling that. You need to go and do it again. Um, so hence, I was a bit uh, annoyed. Um, so I went back in and that's the vocal year. I think we did that in one take. Um, and that's the vocal here. The second day we recorded um, What You Hear Is Love Me, Hold Me, the Take Him Away and Behind Closed Doors, they were actually recorded live as a jam session um, in the studio. That was something that John always wanted to do, was, was a live recording of those songs just like the old school bands had done before. And I think it was vital to be somewhere like Abbey Road and actually to to utilize that and to to really enjoy a moment of history. So that's what we did. So there's the four songs that you've heard on the session. We recorded two more while we were there in Abbey Road and we're, we're now waiting for the time to release those. Um, but yeah, they're, they're the four um, and we're looking now. Behind Closed Doors 
the guitarist that we work with, Dave, he's very influenced with blues and country. So there's a lot of country licks in Behind Closed Doors. Um, and it was one of those songs that we showed to John Smith, the producer. And obviously, he did so many years in Nashville. He was just like, yeah, man, loving this vibe. So we just did it with the acoustic guitar and John and the Cajun um, and the vocal. And, that, and, and that's it. And I don't know if we will ever progress that song because there's something raw and organic about that song and about that recording. But maybe as time progresses, we may. Um, but it's also a song that we can take anywhere. We don't need a big band to perform that song. So so there's the four on that one, Michael. Okay. Well, I got to say, that that's what really got me with you because I listened to that Abbey Road session. I was hooked. And I think you're still doing great work even to this day. And I think you got great talent. And that's why I said I wanted to have this discussion with you today because... Like I said, you've got a bright future ahead of you. You're really doing a lot, which also brings me to Love in the Harbor. Uh, you and John doing great music on that as well. Talk about how the whole Love in the Harbor thing got into fruition. Love in the Harbor basically came into um, our mind's eye about two years ago. We were doing a lot of promotion for Abbey Road. Um, we were doing a lot of promotion for some gigs in the UK. Um, and we were in a lot of radio stations doing live sets. Um, because between myself myself and John, we've written probably over about 70, 70 songs um, and then some mu- musical pieces. Um, and there happened to be a playwright that was on the same show as us who heard the set. And he basically was really... Into- he's Irish. His name's Eddie Alford, and he's an Irish playwright. And John Merrigan is from Dublin, um, and obviously my family uh, from the south of Ireland. So it was a natural connection. And then one thing led to another. We had a coffee. We had a few meetings. Um, and Eddie was explaining to us about his plays. He had, he, he's written up quite a few plays um, and how he would be looking to maybe extend them to music because he's had music in them, but real you know songs that have been written for the play itself would it be something that we would be interested in? So I said, yeah. John said, yes. Send the script over. Let's have a read. We fell in love with the script. It's based on real heroes in World War One, and it's based on three RAF um, heroes, really, that got forgotten. So it was a passionate play. It was, you know, based on real people. Um, and we were hooked. So we decided to start writing some of the music for that. Um, and sort of two years on, we now have it up and running and, and it's going on a mini tour um, and it's doing really well. So that's that's really how that journey came about. And I got to say, I've seen the work that you guys done for it. It's amazing. I would recommend anyone in the UK to check out Love on the Harbor. It's, it's tremendous work. Uh, one other song I wanted to mention to you before, John sent me over some of your great songs, and we're going to touch base on those songs as well, and we're going to play it for my listeners. But one song I had to ask you about, I saw you uh, do it on YouTube. I believe it's also on SoundCloud as well. I wanted to talk to you about the song Heartbreaker. It's another one of your greats. Uh, talk about going into that song as well, Heartbreaker. That one... God, Michael, that's that's a tad tricky that one because we we John and I when I first met John, John was in a big band and I auditioned for John's band and it was a covers band. So for years and years we we performed covers for some big gigs and corporate gigs. Um, so when we decided to cross over to our own music, we didn't really do covers anymore. Although we did privately, we didn't do it on a public forum. Um, and we were asked a few times, would we do some covers? Um, and we sort of said, no, you know, we've sort of moved on from that. And then someone said, well, what about recording a cover and changing it? And Heartbreaker is a song that we, we did a few times and we gigged and it was a favorite song of mine and, and, and John loved it. And our guitarist, David Barber loved it too. And he would often play it after gigs as a wind down. Um, and then one day after a gig, they said, you know, we could, we could maybe do something with this. And the management that we worked with asked if we would, if we were going to do it, we had to do it with emotion and respect to the original, you know, Miss Dionne Warwick, 
did an amazing vocal performance on that and and obviously the Bee Gees were there and they wrote the, the initial song but in order to bring it certainly for the London market um, it had to be brought with a twist and it had to be brought with with a line that could reach what the original was but that would bring it into what the music industry within the UK is now um, the stuff that John and I write is very, very 80s influenced, you know, the types of Chicago, the band Chicago and Hart and things like that. And Fleetwood Mac, Glen Campbell. It's not really the UK scene, so it has a niche market, whereas Heartbreaker had to, to be taken in a different direction in order to meet the UK market. So that's how we landed on Heartbreaker. We recorded that basically live. John did a lot of drums on that, and there was lots of guitar. And then basically that was all built around my vocal. And then the producer, a guy called Alan Sampson, he then very cleverly took all those instruments off and mixed them in to what you hear, which is a very urban, young vibe on, on a twist of, of a, a, you know, a traditional um, piece of art, really. So that's how we ended up with Heartbreaker. Nice, because I got to say, I listened to that. Like I said, doing some of my research before we did this show, I got to say, you did a lot of great work with that and the Abbey Road session. I'll tell you this right now with the utmost sincerity and respect to you, Danielle. I truly wish you nothing but the best going forward. Thank you, Michael. I mean, when we gig, we do gig Heartbreaker very similar to Behind Closed Doors, it really is sort of done with the guitar and the cajon, really. Um, and as we move forward, we may put a violin and stuff on that. Um, because I, for me, singing that song, I love singing it the traditional way. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you've got, you've got radio playing, you've got a, a gig. And obviously, we're blessed enough to be in a gig environment where, where we can do whatever take we want on that particular song. So we do, we do gig it the old-fashioned way, and the audience tend to sing along. So I think when we release that officially, um, it will be a double-sided EP, Michael, I think. It'll have the acoustic version plus um, the radio version. I think I think that, that way you reach everybody. Absolutely, and I'll tell you right now, I'm going to be the first, and I can't wait to check that out. So before we do close out, I do want to also mention this to you, Danielle. Anytime you want to come back on the show, you're more than welcome. I'd be happy to have you on once more. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. So let's get, we're going to talk about the songs because I got a lot of songs from John and John did great work with this as well. So I want to talk to you upon these songs as well, Danielle, because we're going to be playing them for you. The first one I wanted to discuss, we got Behind Closed Doors. We're going to play that and then we're going to play No Trace of You. Then we're going to get On the Path Where We Once Stood and Shy. So I think the first one I'm going to play out of here is a Shy. Talk about that process and going into that, so that uh, whole song right there. Shy, that, that was recorded uh, recorded at Abbey Road, mm -hmm. um, and that really was, um, I mean, as you hear it now, um, that really does resemble the initial song. Um, that was then taken by the producer, um, and basically the guitars that you hear, there's a lot of influence from Queen, um, there's, uh, there's lots of strings, so we all had this idea of what big sound we wanted um, and we were we were over the moon with the sound of Shy because it has such a massive big band appeal um, and there's not many people out in, in, in certainly in 2018 that are producing songs like that because it's, it's a very expensive way to do a song. Um, so yeah, we love Shy. Um, we think it's um, the, the overall production of that is what we call a big production. You know, take take that compared to behind closed doors, it's a massive production, um, and it's just a good, it's a, just a feel good song really. Um, John Smith hit hit all the boxes, um, and and we were just yeah, really really happy with with the way that one came out. Okay, so for my listeners, I'm going to play Shy for everybody, and then we'll get into the other three that John sent me. Also, tremendous song. So let's start off, Danielle. We're going to play Shy for the listeners, and uh, guys, here you go. Maybe it's because I'm shy 
right, and that was Shy. Uh, Danielle, the next one I'm going to play for my listeners is On the Path, where we want to talk about going and uh, recording that song as well. Another great track. On the Path, where we once stood, that was actually written um, by John. John wrote that. John wrote all the lyrics and a lot of the music and arrangement for that. And David Barber wrote um, a massive guitar piece for that and, and, and the atmospheric and the vibe of that song. Um, John wrote that in memory of his mum that passed away. Um, so that song, we wanted we wanted a big sound with that. We wanted emotion. We wanted orchestration. We wanted the listener to feel the emotion that certainly John felt whilst writing that song and I felt um, performing it. So, um, yeah, that that's a very, very personal song and it's one of the reasons we haven't released it yet. We want to wait for the really the right time and we want, to be perfectly honest, we want enough people to know of our music that when this song does get released that they'll really listen to it and it won't just get lost in translation. Um, so this is a very, very personal song to us um, and, and and we love it. So, so yeah. All right. Uh, now I'm going to play On the Path Where We Once Stood. Here we go.
All right, and that was on the path where we once stood. Coming up next, we're going to be talking about Behind Closed Doors. And uh, Danielle, give us a little bit about Behind Closed Doors. Again, another great one. Talk about We talked about the uh, Abbey Road. So just talk about Behind Closed Doors. Behind Closed Doors was written as a song to have on an acoustic guitar. So, you know, I think it's important that when you're gigging and you do have a big band um, and you do have, you know, logistics, that if you're in a, you know, in a, in a coffee shop or in a church or in a radio station and someone says, oh, you know, can you do one of your songs? That it's really important that you can show that what you do in the studio, you can do live. And, it, and, it, and for John and I, and indeed Dave, it's vital that what you hear on the track is what you hear live. So, you know, I'm, I'm really proud to say that if, if we were to perform that now, uh, Behind Closed Doors would stand exactly the same as the recording. Obviously, you know, the magic of Abbey Road, although nothing was done in terms of adjusting any of the vocal or anything because, or any of the instruments because it was a live recording, just the acoustics and the vibe and the emotion, if you're deep enough, you will probably hear a difference. But in terms of the technique um, and, and the performance, they really do sound very similar. So for us, it was really important that we had a song that we could showcase um, to that level. All right, guys, and here is the great Behind Closed Doors.
All right, and that was behind closed doors. And Danielle, last one, no trace of you. No trace of you um, was originally written. We'd we'd gone. We'd we'd been to the cinema to the movies, and we saw one of the Bond films. So myself and John were really inspired to write uh, a theme along those lines, um, and we were really into that. And then somehow, I'm not sure how, um, when when it got sent across and it came back. It was too nice as a ballad. And I think we hadn't long really written Behind Closed Doors. And I think myself and John was like, well, maybe we should do something with a little bit more guts and a little bit more, you know, um, bass and drums and and big guitars. So we decided after a few Skype calls of which way the song would go, um, that it would end up as you hear it now, with um, the U2, U2, Killers, Pink vibe. And the, the producer, John Smith, rang John literally as we come off of doing a massive gig to thousands and thousands of people. And we were really obviously high on adrenaline. Um, and we said, we want a stadium song. Give us a stadium song. So that's what he did. He gave us a stadium song. So you got no choice of you. All right, guys, and here is No Trace of You. My destiny 
All right, and that was no trace of work. As always, Danielle, amazing job, and you're an amazing talent. So this is where now I step back, and please promote your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media platforms, and please promote your upcoming events as well. The floor is yours. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, please find me on social media. I'm on um, Instagram, which is at Real Danny Morgan, spelled with D-A-N-N-I. The same ID, Real Danny Morgan on Twitter. Facebook is Danielle Morgan, um, and LinkedIn is Danielle Morgan. Please, guys, come on, say hello, um, and especially if you've heard the show, please mention Michael um, and uh, ask for a re- retweet. Mm-hmm. Um, and also find John Merrigan at Fat Dan, um, Fat Dan Music. Um, and we just love new followers. We want to touch base with you guys. We want to share our music. We want to see what you're up to. Um, the website is www.daniellemorganmusic.com. Um, and yeah, if anyone's listening in the UK, we have gigs coming up on the 30th of June, um, the 14th of July, and the 5th and 6th of July we have love in the harbour um so please come on say hello and let us know where you are in the world um and we'll be sure to um link up with you guys all right and um Danielle again it's been an absolute pleasure I look forward to having you back on in the future and if you have any final words for your fans and uh just your overall listeners and your supporters go right ahead I'd just like to say every song that myself and John writes it's done with raw emotion. Um, there's no clinical recipe to, to our songwriting. And a lot of our songs, almost all of them, are written on a personal journey or someone or something that's inspired us. We might take a little bit longer than average to release our songs. Um, and that's just because we don't want to just keep chucking stuff out that people have not listened to or related to. And if any of you guys want to know the meaning of the songs or you want to... Um, ask how we, you know, got on to something or how the lyrics were written or copies of the lyrics, please get in touch. And we're happy, really happy to share our story um, and do some video feeds live to show you how the song evolved and, you know, how we came to the finished production because taking a song from a, a, a raw thing that you, you may have written in maybe 15 minutes, getting that to a studio production is obviously a lot longer and a bigger process. And we're really happy to share our journey of how we write um, and how we perform. We'd love to be coming over to America. We're we're very blessed with a lot of followers in the States. Um, We have a lot of DJs that play our stuff. So uh, we will be looking at coming over to the States. Our guys this end are in talks at the moment of logistics. And as soon as we know, Michael, you'll be one of the first to be updated with that info, to share with all your followers and, and your listeners. And um, and we really, really are excited about coming to America. Uh, uh, we are excited to have you. I it, Please, guys, definitely check out Danielle. Check out John, the great people. They do a lot of great work. And again, Danielle, bears repeating, look forward to having you back on again. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks again, Michael. And thanks again for all the lovely questions and playing our music and for getting us. Um, and... Um, you know, just wishing everybody um, safe travels wherever they are. And, uh, you know, really, really excited to, to touch base with you again. And God bless to you all. And thanks for having us. Very welcome. Uh, God bless you too. And I look forward to do it again. Happy to do it. And I love what I do. And uh, guys, this has concluded another interview. Danielle, thank you again so much for your time. Thanks, Michael. Bye now.